course. Where's the captain? Everybody that was in charge of running this ship is dead. It all falls to us now. We have some of the most brilliant engineers and scientists chosen to build a colony from scratch on an alien planet. We're the furthest out anyone's ever been. Who could attack us? I've got bad news. We have only four days of water left. Life support warning. <gasps> there is no air left in the ship. If someone doesn't do this, our journey ends here. I've got to be honest. I really thought traveling faster than the speed of light was going to be a little more fun. Let's crank it up. Every single person matters. We're in a war for survival. Not everyone is going to make it. Hi, this is Ken with Wormhole Riders out of San Francisco, and we're here with Jonathan Glasner. Jonathan, welcome to WonderCon. Thank you. You know, this is pretty exciting. We followed your career <laughs> for many, many years. Uh, Stargate History One, of course. Mm -hmm. um, folks will remember Double Secret Productions, yep. which was Stargate Atlantis, and Universe is what we were told by him to give. Well, no, uh, Double Secret Productions was Brad Wright and myself. Oh. That was our company name, oh, yeah. Because all the fans thought it was for the other two series. No, no, no. no. But, we, you know, we've loved what you've done over the years. Uh, in specific, you and your co-showrunner, um, uh, Dean, Mr. Mm -hmm. Devlin, did The Outpost together, another mm -hmm. fantastic show. Thank you. And the question that our fans want to know about is, how long did you have the arc in development? Well, Dean had it. D Dean created it before I came along. He had it in development, I think, you'll have to ask him, but I think it was about a year before it got picked up. Yeah, he, he wrote it on spec, and then he took it to Sci-Fi, and Sci-Fi bought it. So. Well, we were pretty happy about that, because we, yeah. we, we got word last year that it was coming, and speaking with the nice NBC sci-fi people we couldn't get a commit and they said hold on now it's coming It'll oh now if by that if you meant production development it took a long time to make the show because we had to build all those massive sets cast it we needed a lot of lead time for all the visual effects so it we started a little more than a year ago I was gonna it. say yeah 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 and then, and then he, a year then before that before that he concept. wrote the script right yeah so right. how did you feel when he asked you to come aboard and and come back to a true, I mean, there's a lot of real science uh -huh. that's in the arc. Yeah, um, and a lot of not. <laughs> well, well, of course, you know, it's a space, yeah. I, don't, I don't like to use the word uh, space opera. That's but, what it um, is, though. It's a space drama. Yeah. You've got a lot of great characters that you spent time developing, um, and we're going to talk about those a little bit. Um, what was it like, the challenge, to make the science as realistic as possible? Well, I mean, our attitude about the science was we would use whatever we could that was real, um, especially technology that we know is being developed now for NASA or, or for SpaceX or whatever for the near future, because this show's set in the near future compared to Star Trek and you know, sure. all the other shows, Star yeah. Wars. And um, so we, we tried to use all that technology. What kind of engines would it have? What kind of... Uh, um, uh, space suits, what kind of, how would the oxygen be made, how would the food be made. But then, you know, it comes to making a drama that's entertaining on television, you got to let a lot of the reality go. So, for example, we, I, I, I've been seeing a lot of criticism online about how, you know, in real life you burn the engine for however long it takes to get up to speed and then you turn it off and the, the ship will keep going at that speed. That's true, but if you do a visual shot of that... <laughs> it's going to look like a ship just sitting there exactly. because there's nothing sure. going exactly. by. Yeah. So Ion drive or nuclear drive. Exactly. Yeah. So we, we leave the engines on. Well. And for dramatic purposes, when you shut the engines off, it stops the ship. <laughs> you know, I mean, but that's not reality. Of course it's not. Well, well there's a lot of, lot of great things. The sets are fantastic. Thank you. Uh, the crew yeah, interaction. One of the things that I really enjoyed um, is, uh, of course, uh, we'll talk about uh, Angus, mm -hmm. uh, Plant Boy, uh, kind of reminded me a little bit of... Uh, David Blue in Stargate Universe, Computer Boy, because he mm, was the geek. A little geek. bit, a little bit. Yeah, um, but that was very realistic because there was a movie that was very famous called The Martian. Right. That did 
the growing of the mm-hmm. uh, the food. Yeah, it's a it's a real thing. They're they're working on on uh, hydroponic gardens for space travel. In reality, they they're usually vertical, um, but you can't walk among that. So we made it horizontal. Right. right. Uh, so again, that's another cheat we did. But it's based on the idea of the hydroponic gardens, which don't use soil. They use uh, water and chemicals and. Right, it's recycled right. and reused. But so. still, you know, it's a, it's a nice touch. Yeah. And uh, they're going cool. to gonna have potato salad. Yeah. Uh, they're going to have other vegetables. Yeah. Um, so looking at the main crew, I mean, also, so you went on set, oh, on yeah. site, overseas oh, yeah. in Romania? No, uh, 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 Belgrade, Serbia. Sorry, Be- Belgrade, Serbia. Um, and there's a lot of great supporting actors coming oh, out yeah. of that area. Yeah. Um, I mean, fortunately, we did the outpost before we did this show so you there. Had access. And we knew, th- we knew the good ones. Yeah. And, you know, there's, there's several that were on the outpost that are on our show. Um, and so, yeah, there's some, there's some great ones. It's well, Ki- Kiana Upjeva, she's, yeah. she's really a, a wonderful uh, kind of an engineering person. And then um, we like uh, Shalini, uh, the doc. Yeah, poor, she's poor not doc. from there, though. She's no, from no. the UK. You know, poor doc and her yeah her uh, ep- um, addiction to yeah. the opioids uh you know one of the the most favorite characters that we hear about is uh is felix yeah yeah and he's a he's a serbian actor he was in the outpost with this much makeup on his face the whole time so you might not recognize him but um we loved him on the outpost so much we said we got we got to put him in on this show and so. what and tell us a little bit more about cat and her uh we suspect that she's had since she's kind of randy with uh, the the gentleman the shower the scene oh yeah yeah, yeah with uh with trust and she of course has gone after uh james mm-hmm. uh, matter of fact we think she'd go after anybody but then mostly they go after her how did you cast her uh, we, you know, just like everybody else, auditions. She was a, a, um, Brit- a British actress who's really good. And, you know, what's funny is if you interview her or see her talk, she's actually British with a British accent. And I had only seen her audition, and she kept the American accent the whole time. And then when I met her on set, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> it kind of threw me for a minute. But she's... she's well, it's, really kind, it's kind of like uh, we've interviewed Anna, Anna Torr before with Fringe, uh, mm-hmm. another f- fabulous series. And... When you interview her, she's not in character. Mm-hmm. It's pure Australian, but then when you see her on the show. So the other three are the main core characters. Um, uh, Patricia in uh, Canada, our editor up there, mm-hmm. uh, when he was kind of being a little crazy, called him Looney Lane. By the way, he plays the evil perfect. He's a great actor. We have all the respect for him. Um, that must have been a hard one to catch since he got tied up with uh, Taylor, uh, the guy that had the secret of William Trust. Mm-hmm. Um, t- well, it's not Taylor, um, but now that you said Taylor, you put Bent. that in my head. Oh, come on. Uh, okay, but you know the, the yeah. guy the guy that, yeah, that yeah, sacrificed yeah. his yeah. life. Um, how did you cast That's him? Funny, you, put, you planted that seed in my head, and now I can't get it up. Um, he was cast, which one, uh, Reese? Yes. Reese was in The Outpost. Yes. And um, he is a brilliant, brilliant actor. And we actually made him audition for the part because in in the outpost he's this fighter, you know. And and we wanted a guy who was a little more of a wimp, kind of you know, pisses you off kind of guy. And he came in and read for it. And I'm, both Dean and I were like, wow. Well, he's a he character that you so, love that you love to hate. Yeah, he's and so he's and he's really grown into the role. Of course, yeah. now he's been demoted. Most of the fans know that uh, he's done. Oh, uh, that brings us to James. Mm-hmm. Um, course we we hope that they I, I love the backstory in the year after the arc mm-hmm. about the uh, is it Clampkins mm-hmm. yeah how you guys made that up so we hope that he gets the uh, done but he's always been kind of level-headed you stop the fighting between the main character Sharon mm-hmm. um, what did where did you get him from England as well did, didn't yeah, he? he's British yeah yeah he's uh, uh, he's a brilliant actor he's he's multi-talented he does broadway he does uh he he tra- he toured with uh, elton john at one point he's a singer songwriter and he, a great actor. and let's talk and a he's little putting on the scottish accent and let's talk just a little bit about the lead the acting captain uh lieutenant yeah. sharon who's now the captain christy yeah tell us a little bit about christy and how you picked her well dean saw her and he'll dean will tell you the story he saw her in a movie that he that he had on his service and said that that's her and brought her in and you know of course the network insists that you see a lot of people to decide to sure, make sure, sure you've seen all your choices so we had to go through that that but we ended up 
Well, okay, last 15 seconds. Yes. Uh, congratulations on your daughter. Well, thank you. Uh, who is Kelly, and we're not going to give any spoilers out, folks, but watch out for Kelly. She's a pistol <laughs> packing mama, uh, but it's nice to see her there. Thank, thank you. For your time, sir. Thank you. All right. Bye bye. Hi, this is uh, Ken Weeks with uh, Wormhole Riders out of San Francisco, and we're here with one of my favorite creators and producers. Dean Devlin. Dean, welcome to WonderCon. Thank you. Thank you. It's great to be here. Dean, tell us a little bit about uh, your role um, in creating this. We understand it's about two years ago that you got the idea. So it might have even been a little bit longer than that, uh, but I was, I was having lunch with a, a brilliant friend of mine named Michael Wright, sure. and we were... Um, just talking about the kind of science fiction shows that we grew up with, that we loved, that we missed. And, and he was just saying that how he so would love to see a series of a diverse group of people stuck on a spaceship dealing with life and death uh, issues every single day. And he said, you know, he just loved the pressure cooker of that and he loved what that did to characters. And after the lunch, I couldn't stop thinking about it. And so I went off and I wrote this script, The Ark. Um, but other shows ended up getting picked up in between, and I was working on these yeah, other shows. Yeah. Uh, uh, Almost Paradise sure. and uh, Leverage Redemption. Yep. So finally, you know, the things cleared up a little bit, and I sent the script out, and I got a call from Sci-Fi Channel, and they loved it. They wanted to do it. And so I was like, okay, now I have to make this thing. And so I, uh, I begged Jonathan Glasner to come on board, and, you know, he's just one of my favorite people in the world to work with. And uh, when he said yes, I, then I knew that we were going to have a show that was going to work. Well, we've uh, we've loved what you've done over the years, and of course, Jonathan as well, uh, Stargate SG-1, uh, original creator. Um, when you thought about a crew in space, you know, the uh, we, we see some complaints. On the, number one, we love the show. We love what you're doing, the character development, where the story arc is going. Uh, we suspect we see what's just up around the corner. Uh, but um, you're doing it differently. You're, you're moving things quickly, and you're not dwelling on any specific issue. Was that part of your original thing so that it doesn't get bogged down? Well, I, again, like I said, I think this is more of a throwback, a love letter to kind of a science fiction show that we don't do anymore. You know, uh, uh, shows today tend to be much darker, much more edgy, way more grounded. Um, our show is not... It's not wildly fanciful, but it's also not overly grounded. It's, it, it, it's about four inches off the ground. Uh, and by doing that, we can really concentrate on the characters and not get overly bogged down with the science of how would this work and you know, wouldn't they all be floating? And it's like, it's like our show is about the people. And so by, by having that focus shift, we can really ha have some more fun, have a lot of things happen quickly and have it resolved. Um, even though this is a serialized show, you know, we wanted it to be a show that you could start it on episode four and still kind of get what's going on, you yeah. know? And so, yeah, it, it's not a show for everybody, but uh, the people who, who... No, 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 we disagree. It's a show for everybody, <laughs> and it needs to be renewed for at least five seasons. Um, you've done a great job with the character development. There's a good interaction between the three lead lieutenants, uh, the doctor, um, everybody loves Felix. One of the characters I didn't ask nothing about is uh, Stacy Reed, uh, who plays Alicia, and... <clears throat> Who made up the name Alicia Minium? <laughs> uh, that, I think that came uh, out of the writer's room. Uh, I loved that one the first time I heard them say that. But Alicia is, it, it was one of the first characters I had in my head writing the pilot. And, and probably the only character that I have a, a very specific idea of where I want that character to go. Um, but as far as uh, all the other characters, you know, the fun thing was is after I did the pilot, uh, um, uh, Jonathan said to me, well, so where are these characters going? And I said, I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> I said, I said, I want to see where you guys take it. And if I really don't like what you're doing, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I had in mind. But well, what I liked about her character, and again, I, we love the, all the main cast and the supporting actors are great too, um, is that she got promoted yeah. to be on the bridge team and has done a great job. Um, we, we know it's time to go here, but we'd like to talk a little bit about the future. Um, we don't trust Kelly. That's Jonathan <laughs> Klasner's daughter. We're not going to tell you anything else. And there's another, there's another villainous. Oh, she's very lovely. Uh, and then 
can you tell the viewers a little bit without no, no spoilers? There's another name that's floated out there, Evelyn Maddox. Tell us a little bit about Evelyn, who stole William Trust's corporation and. Well, I think that the, 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 the future that you have to kind of understand that the arc exists in is one where uh, ag government agencies like NASA are less and less powerful until they don't exist. And really, it's all about what billionaires are controlling the space race in the future. A lot like Elon Musk, yeah. And all the other yeah, ones, the other you know, and, and imagine if Bezos, and imagine if more happened. You know, what, what does that future look like? And so Evelyn was a competing a, a billionaire to to trust, and uh, at some point she ha did a hostile takeover of Trust Enterprises. So, uh, so we're going to meet Evelyn coming up soon, I suspect. Uh, I, I would say if you put your money on meeting <laughs> Evelyn, you're probably going to win that bet. Last thing, you're doing a great job with the special effects. I particularly like what you've done with the warp bubble. Oh, nice. uh, it, uh, it is different than you know Star Trek or Stargate or any of that stuff. Um, where did you find the VFX team and? Was it your idea, Jonathan's idea, to, the way that the bubble works and it's shimmery? Are you happy with it? I, I love it. I mean, the thing is, you know, when we started working on this, you know, there was a lot of people saying you'll never actually beat the speed of light. You can't. And so we had it that they can travel right up to the speed of light, but they couldn't break it. Right. And then uh, uh, Jonathan showed me this article saying that the, the real way to break the speed of light is to actually not move, but to have the universe move around you. Yes. And so we started talking, what would that look like? And what would that feel like? And, and so it really came from, from Jonathan. Well, uh, folks, we're heading into episode nine. There's four more episodes to go, nine, 10, 11, 12. It really is the best show on TV right now for sci-fi, fantasy, and space adventure. Tune into sci-fi. Uh, every Wednesday and also very popular in Canada we understand yeah yeah we're having a great run there and and uh, a couple and you're going international soon in April right yeah there will be in the UK in Germany uh, not soon all over the world all right Dean thank you for your time. thank you nice meeting you sir have Take a nice care. day bye-bye it knocked us off course. Where's the captain? Everybody that was in charge of running this ship is dead. It all falls to us now. We have some of the most brilliant engineers and scientists chosen to build a colony from scratch on an alien planet. We're the furthest out anyone's ever been. Who could attack us? I've got bad news. We have only four days of water left. Life support warning. <gasps> there is no air left in the ship. If someone doesn't do this, our journey ends here. I've got to be honest. I really thought traveling faster than the speed of light was going to be a little more fun. Let's crank it up. Every single person matters. We're in a war for survival. Not everyone is going to make it.